Children, teach us. We build schools and we build houses and we make that nursery room in the house. We put the little mobiles above their crib. We make sure the big bunny is by the door and the ukulele on the mantle. The food just right. Maybe it's mac and cheese, but it's just right. We train them to welcome their new siblings and make sure that they're ready to be the big sister. All along the path by which we think we are teaching them, they teach us. I had one young mom some time ago tell me, following the birth of her child, that she now knew there was someone in the world for whom she would give her very life. Just her child coming into existence taught her. Her daughter needed do nothing other than exist, and she began teaching her mom. Benedict, you are a wonderful writer. That's no revelation to anyone who knows you. But I hope you don't mind if I read a portion of the story you wrote about your daughter's life. It put a smile on my face as I thought of all those photos and videos that you showed me of Genevieve. You wrote about your daughter an avid artist who enjoyed the mediums of sand piles, Play-Doh, crayons, and finger painting. Reader of all books, piano key pounder, drummer and singer, botanist and mud pie maker, baker. She hugged all and lit up the lives of everyone around her. She could play and swing at park for hours and was working on her ukulele skills. Genevieve typically knew exactly what she wanted and how to get her loved ones to change their plans and follow her lead. She loved gymnastics and was fine-tuning her somersault and balance beam abilities. She enjoyed trying new sports and activities, but it was the giggle and cuddle fests with beloved friends that she enjoyed more than the games themselves. An honorary Benedictine oblate, she knew how to say her dinner prayers and loved gathering with her community in person and on online. End quote. That sums up so much. Perfectly written. Beautiful. She sure was an accomplished human being way ahead of her years. In the midst of the hugs and the life, the line I want to highlight is this. Genevieve typically knew exactly what she wanted and how to get her loved ones to change their plans and follow her lead. How well she had trained you. Genevieve taught you, and she teaches us. And she teaches us still. She, no doubt she taught us how to be curious and open. She taught us how to lead with a smile and what was really important. She taught us how to be receptive. She taught us how to smile and enjoy the little things, and that's what the big things. but she taught you, Benedict and Rachel. She taught you something in which we can only share. She taught you how deep and selfless and generous you are. For my guess is that you always desired to love deeply, but now you know in the concrete in fact, how deep that love goes.
Genevieve taught you how deeply you can love. We may be feeling a great many things right now. We certainly feel sorrow. We may feel anger. When we think of all of Genevieve's antics, we may even smile or laugh. We may not know what we feel. We may just be confused right now about what to think. We may not believe it is even possible that she's died. We may have all these thoughts, feelings, and questions at various times or all at once. I certainly do not have the answers to the questions about why, and I doubt anyone on this earth does, right now anyway. Why does such a thing happen to a little girl? But what I do know, and we know some things here, we know the goodness of Genevieve, the great lessons she taught you and continues to teach us. I also know these are signs of the goodness of the one who created her. They're signs of your goodness, her parents and family, and they are signs of the goodness of our God who is love. We may know what the doctors told us, but we do not know the answer to that bigger question of why. What we do know is that Genevieve is a gift. She is good. And this goodness was given you by a loving and merciful God. And this God does not leave you or Genevieve or any of us alone. When we love someone, truly love them, we are united with them in every sinew of their being. Remember St. Paul wrote, the greatest of these gifts is love, and love does not come to an end. When we're separated from one that we love, we feel their absence in the very deep recesses of our being. We know they're absent. The pain you feel now is due to the fact that you are forever united in love for your daughter. But there is another truth we find here. Love does not come to an end. You wish, we all wish, right now that Genevieve would fling open the top of that casket and sit up and start playing her ukulele with that big smile on her face. How we wish, we wish, she could come right now and say, I want to go play in my sandbox and get covered from head to toe. But through your love, Benedict and Rachel, in sharing the creative will of God, you gave Genevieve an immortal soul, a soul to whom God made a promise of eternal life and joy in his kingdom. But this is not an impersonal kingdom. It's not just a place with a lot of stuff. This is a kingdom of the faithful people we know, right? Our Lord, his Blessed Mother, St. Benedict and St. Scholastic and all those relatives and friends who have gone before us, all ready to embrace her and hold her tight. Mom, Dad, Opa and Bagsha, you all wish you could hold her close and see that big smile again. But the sorrow that we see here is just but for a time. This is not the end. You will see her again. And I have to wonder whether now her two little siblings will have their own precious intercessor seated at the right hand of God. 
for our Lord tells us that the kingdom belongs to such as these. And that we must listen to them. So I am quite confident our Lord loving her perfectly and Genevieve, well, you know, getting her loved ones to do whatever she wishes, she is going to be constantly interceding on behalf of her mommy and daddy and siblings and relatives and friends, and I'm pretty sure she'll get her way. About two months from now, you, Rachel, will celebrate the birth of Genevieve's siblings. And Genevieve will be that big sister in grand fashion. At about the same time, maybe a little later, the world will celebrate the anniversary of the birth of a little baby boy whose mom held him close on a cold winter night. Although the Blessed Mother had 33 years with her son, he too would be taken from her. He was taken from her and she gave him over so that the gates of heaven would be open to Genevieve and to all of us. The Lord who loved Genevieve before she existed, who loved us from the dawn of time, who loved us so much that he gave his life on a cross, he knew like that friend of mine, that as soon as Genevieve was born, indeed the day each of us was born, our Lord knew that there was someone in the world for whom he would give his life, whom he loved that much. So in the midst of our sorrow, we give thanks to God for the life of Genevieve. And we ask God to allow her to continue to teach us, to teach us about love and eternal joy with the Lord.